Hello, welcome back. It's Freddie in the Shed. I just thought on this video it'd be interesting to compare these two retro steam engines side by side. These came in from Engine DIY. Engine DIY is a great website to visit if you're into anything like steam engines or petrol engines, jet engines. It's quite amazing what they do. Uh, if this is your thing, just check out the link in the description and you'll be blown away by some of the models they do. Anyway, they sent these two engines in, thank you very much. They come in kit form, which I think is most of the enjoyment really, is building all of these engines up. Fortunately, all of the complicated stuff, all these linkages, all these beams and everything, is done for you. Um, it's simple nut and bolt work. You just bolt everything together, bolt it uh, to the frame. If you've ever made Lego, then you can make these kits. I did do two very comprehensive videos on, on one of each uh, model where I showed it uh, being built. Again, I'll link those in the description if you're interested to see how these engines uh, are built. But I just thought it's interesting to put them side by side. I mean, the first thing that strikes you, if you've ever had one of those uh, mammoth steam engines as a kid, and you were fortunate to get, to get those, the first thing that will strike you is the step up in quality in these engines. They are really, really superb. Everything is metal, um, it's brushed, laser cut stainless steel or brass. And then the flywheel, so aluminium and, and the base is uh, just a metal, coated metal. But the quality is quite outstanding um, for the money. They're not cheap, but they're also not that much more than a Rolesco kit. And everything, like the eccentrics and also the flywheel, all ball bearing races as well. So we'll just have a closer look at the Retro Zero 02. This is a double acting uh, Stevenson's Link steam engine and then we'll have a closer look at the beam engine and then I'll take them downstairs and we'll run them together side by side and we can see how they run. So this engine kit, it would take you probably two to three hours at a steady pace to build it yourself. Not, not too long really. So this is a double acting steam engine and the main feature is the Stevenson's Link or Stevenson's valve gear, which we can see here with these two eccentrics, invented in 1841. Now, typically, it wasn't Robert Stevenson that actually sat down and come up with this idea. It was two of his employees, uh, a draftsman named William Howe and a pattern maker, or an engineer, if you like, called William Williams. They were the clever guys that came up with this this mechanism but of course Stevenson owned the company he painted patented it and got all the credit and all the money afterwards but it sort of revolutionized steam engines um, going going forward everyone adopted this Stevenson's link and it's quite unique really how it worked as I say this is a double acting steam engine so you get a power stroke in the uh, cylinder block here not only when the piston goes forward but also when the piston goes back and that gives you about 80 percent more power than a conventional single acting steam engine. But what this link enabled um, operators to do was via this lever, lever was to change the direction of the motor, of the flywheel, which was very, very useful when you think about it for steam, steam trains, steam engines, because it allowed shunting backwards and forwards. You, you could almost change it on the fly instantly. You could also as well by very, very slightly adjusting the lever, you could just adjust the timing slightly of the engine as well, which helped you um, get up and down gradients. So it was a very uh, substantial invention on steam engine. It's really, really done nicely on this model here with the two eccentrics, so all in brass, all ball bearings, and these uh, sort of piston rods and everything. Really, really nicely done. The rest of the model, what you get with this kit, you do get a little generator as well and a lamp post, which is very slightly off camera. Let me just bring the camera up. So you get this, again, it's all brass with a little LED light. And again, uh, the, the difference between a cheap kit and a, and a quality kit is how slow you can get the engine to run without stalling. And this one runs really, really slow and even at the slowest speed, the light still works. So yeah, really nice. As rather a small boiler, I'm going to say is the boiler is a little bit small, um, holds about 100 millilitres uh, full. You generally run these 
on about 50 to 60 millilitres of distilled water. You don't use tap water in these because of lime scale. And you get about eight to 10 minutes of runtime. It does have a solid brass whistle there, just slightly off camera as, as well. So yeah, a really, really nice kit this. And uh, as I say, especially with the little generator and the light, that makes it nice when you demonstrate it. I think people quite like to see that. Let's have a look at the older design. Let's have a look at the Watts beam engine. So this is an older design of uh, engine. This is a pivoted beam engine, pretty much the James Watt design. It doesn't come with a generator. It is cheaper than the Zero Two model. If you want a generator, they'll sell you a very nice quality little standalone generator there, that, which this engine will drive. So the main feature on, on this engine really I think that sets it apart is not only the pivoted beam, which again is very nicely done with all of the linkage there, but I think it's the governors here. This is a centrifugal governor, fly, a fly ball bearing governor. And it really works. Sometimes like on a Walesco engine, they'll, they'll do <laughs> a very crude imitation of a ball bearing governor and it's not functional, but this is functional. This regulates the speed of the engine as these fly, fly balls spin out. And you'll see that when the engine's running, it adjusts the steam pressure there going into the cylinder block, which is quite remarkable, especially at this, uh, at this price level. The rest of the engine, um, basically you've got the same boiler. So you, again, it's a 100 milliliter boiler you're looking at running it about 50 to 60 millilitres of distilled water. You have a different whistle on this one, slightly smaller. It's the same solid brass, brass regulator valve here, which adjusts, adjusts your steam. And yeah, once again, the quality is outstanding. It really is. Everything is metal. It's very heavy as well in, 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 in the hand. Again, you've got um, laser cut brushed stainless steel here for the linkages on the beam. The pedestal is solid metal and everything else is machined or cast solid brass. Really, really nice thing to own. And even if you don't, if you never run it, you just had it as a demonstration piece. It's um, very, very impressive. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the two models downstairs and then we'll just run them side by side. They do run differently. Um, the beam engine, of course, being an older design, it's single action as well. It's only got one spool valve there. It does run slower. To my mind, I prefer the beam engine, I think. I think it sort of um, has that traditional steam engine sound. And also because there is lubrication needed on the piston on this, it's an open piston and you have to put steam oil in. When this gets really, really hot, that evaporates with the steam and you get that wonderful, wonderful sort of hot steam oil smell. Um, you'll know what I mean if you've ever owned one of these steam engines. It's a really, really wonderful smell. It's part of the, ex the experience. But yeah, really nice, really nice quality, fantastic. So we're gonna take these downstairs and I'll play the video out running these um, side by side. As always, I say links in the description to the website if you want to go out and check these uh, these kits yourself. I do get a little discount from Engine DIY. There'll be a discount code which you could save you a little bit of money off. Uh, but even if you just go over to their website and just check out their other models, they do some amazing models on the website. You can lose yourself on there and you could, uh, yeah, probably bankrupt yourself as well. But very, very, very good. Right, let me take these downstairs and then we'll play the video out with these engines running. I want to say thank you at the end. So cheers. Thank you for watching Fred in the Shed. I do appreciate uh, your view time.